Well, we're heading over to Garage Mahal. Yes. Now, some time back, I threatened to get several different artists to show us how to paint backdrops. And Robbie Spangler said he would help. Right. And Robbie paints some amazing backdrops. Yes, some of the most amazing I've seen. And we have an ulterior motive, because not only is he going to show us how to paint a backdrop, he's going to paint our backdrop. <laughs> for the switching yard on the 20 scale railroad. Yes. And we've been working on this for a while, but we're finally ready to actually put the paint to the backdrop, and Spangler is helping with that. So check this out. It's kind of a how-to on painting a backdrop with Robbie, and it's us conning our way into getting a free backdrop out of Spangler. <laughs> so check it out. So a few months ago, we attended a seminar, uh, the NMRA, with yeah. Gil Bennett. And Gil was teaching us how to paint uh, backdrops. Here's our attempt. Actually, Karen's pine trees oh here are the only gosh. thing that looked decent at all. <laughs> and so we, uh, we decided that we needed to learn more. We have Steve building the backdrop. As you can see, it's a huge huge backdrop it's, because it's a 20th scale yes it's railroad <laughs> some of the buildings here are going to be four feet tall so right the backdrop is eight feet tall uh, back in the engine shop area but over here by the accidental railroad this area down here will be the switching yard mm -hmm. and we painted it blue and we were all set to do a backdrop until I put up the second shelf here and that put shelf brackets in the way. Oh no. And there they are and we were trying to figure out what in the world to do. Should have planned that out ahead of time but yes. now we ended up with shelf brackets on top of our backdrop and what the heck do we do with that. But we thought we could take advantage of this little curvature in the brackets to do a coving out of a heavy construction paper. And that almost worked. Almost, yeah, <laughs> yeah almost. Sort of, it sort of Ooh, worked. Yeah. Also, I'm lighting this whole area with strip LEDs, and I'm gonna use two separate strips up there to get different kinds of lighting effects. Yes. It'll be fun. Yes, it will. Now we're securing uh, the paper and the light strips with double stick tape. Oh, sticky stuff. And most of it's 3M, but we found this stuff here called Fast Cap. And boy, does that work it's good. Stuck it's me to the paper. It more sticks every. It sticks your fingers. Yeah. It sticks everything. But this yeah. is really good stuff. You can find it on the internet. It's on Amazon and stuff. Fast Cap double stick tape. Really an amazing product. Mm -hmm. But uh, we digress. So we put up all of our different uh, sticky tapes here, and then we put our heavy construction paper yes. on top of that. And uh, other than the fact that the construction paper tends to stretch and expand mm -hmm. and react to heat and stuff, right. it, it's pretty good. And then Karen here hid the seam where the paper meets the existing backdrop. And then we came back in and of course sanded, sanded all that it. out. And then painted the whole thing. Started by spraying an enamel onto the paper because otherwise the latex paint would have just sucked into no. that and ruined right. the whole thing. But all in all, it turned out fairly reasonable. I went through here and painted in a bunch of uh, background clouds. Yes. Because I feel fairly comfortable painting clouds. And here's the two, uh, two light strips, one set to red and one set to daylight. And it gives this effect right here. It's kind of a late afternoon sort of light effect. So like I say, you can do all these fun light effects. And here is the backdrop that I kind of came up with. I went into mm -hmm. Photoshop. Yes, Photoshop's always and, great. And I got trees and mountains and, and stuff. And I just cobbled this together out of different pictures in Photoshop. The fence here is going to be a real wood fence. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that you have with a backdrop is where the backdrop meets the railroad, you can clearly see that there's a backdrop there's meeting a the railroad. Line. <laughs> there's a line there, and you need to hide that somehow. So the fence is going to hide it all the way across here, but I thought, well, that's gonna be boring if that goes all the way across. So I end the wood fence here, and it switches over to a wire fence. Mm. And then we're going to disguise that here with actual 3D vegetation, weeds, and this tree is actually going to be a flat. A flat. A flat, a full three-dimensional tree, but up against the flat so oh. that it doesn't stick out very far. <laughs> there you go. And then we got more real vegetation in the wire fence here, 
and then the wood fence picks up again at the far right side and this is going to be an icing platform nice. here. I'm doing an ice plant at the far right side where the paint booth is mm -hmm. and that will disguise the paint booth. There's going to be a mirror there too. <laughs> uh, we're going to have some fun with the mirror. <laughs> But an ice plant would normally have an icing platform for filling the reefers, but they're really big and they take up a lot of space. And in 20th scale, we just don't have the space. No. So I'm going to do an ice platform like this, but I'm going to build it as a flat so it sits right up against the painted backdrop and only sticks out half an inch or so, as opposed to sticking out about six inches, oh. which is the way it should be. And this is the ice plant that's been my inspiration. It's uh, the Utah Ice and Storage Company. This was still around into about the 90s and well, and it burned down. Serious. I took a million photographs of it and what I really loved was the patina here, the mm -hmm. red brick with the salt patina and just, just beautiful. So I wanna use that as an inspiration for the ice plant that'll be up against the paint booth here. And then the ice platform will extend out along the backdrop. So Robbie's just penciling in uh, where things are going to be here. I printed out the Photoshop plan and we've got that hanging up here. And Robbie's using that as a guide to figure out where trees are going to be and where mountains are going to be. And he's just penciling that onto the existing backdrop that I've already painted clouds onto. Now Robbie's just using uh, latex house paint here. Really? Yeah, acrylic latex. Uh, artists' acrylics are kind of the right. same thing, but they're so darn expensive. Covering large areas like this, both he and I just went out and bought gallons of house paint, and I painted on uh, the blues with that, and now he's coming in with these base colors. And he tells us these base colors won't even show. No. That they're just kind of there as a guide for him. And because the, the colors are so translucent that you see right through them. And he needs a base back behind the other colors to use as an undercoat. So as he builds up translucent layers, you don't see sky coming through <laughs> below, which would look gnarly. It looks a little weird, yeah. So, and, it, and it gives him a wonderful uh, way to see what's mountain, what's tree, and whatnot by roughing in these colors. These colors are fairly light. Uh, the next colors to go on are very dark because what Robbie likes to do is paint from dark to light. Right. And so the next layer over here will be dark and he'll actually build up different dark colors and then start coming back with detail mm -hmm. in progressively lighter and lighter and lighter colors. Nice. So this is the tree area. It does have a almost greenish quality it to does. it. It does. It's starting to look like a tree. But he likes this uh, as this undercoat color that the trees will go on top of. So along with working dark to light, uh, we're also working back to front. If you think about it, the first thing that went on was the sky and the clouds, and now the distant mountains and trees. And then the foreground is actual three-dimensional models, wood, fence, and so on. And then that gives it a lot of depth. So now Robbie's switching over to the artist's acrylics and use these very sparingly because they're very expensive. Notice he's using blue and white along with this kind of yellow. Everything at this point is being mixed with blue and white to give it depth, to make it feel distant. Because as things are further and further away from you, they pick up more and more atmosphere and therefore they appear to be a lighter blue color. So everything's being mixed with blue and white at this point. Now Karen and I have both worked with a lot of acrylics mm -hmm. and they do tend to dry a much darker color than they appear when they're coming out of the tube. And so you have to be prepared for that, that as it dries, it's going to get much, much darker. And so you have to take that into account as you're working. This looks a lot darker than the colors Robbie usually paints his backdrops. You know, I, I thought so too, but I think it's that technique where he's going dark to light. What we're seeing here is dark, and what we're used to seeing are his finished backdrops, which are so light. Right. 
And to see them being built up this way from dark to light, it's almost sort of shocking at first. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, what in the world? This doesn't look anything like Robbie's backdrops. But as they progress, yeah. it, it lightens right up. It's and starting becomes, to take shape right now. Yeah, and, and becoming very, very atmospheric. That's what I love about Robbie's backdrops is there's a real atmospheric sense of distance. So a lot of what he's roughing in right now are the shadows uh, behind the ridges, the light and dark areas on the face of the mountain that form these gullies and ridges coming down. Uh, we decided early on on just sort of rolling hills as opposed to big granite mountains or anything, uh, just less dynamic and therefore a little less obtrusive. Don't want the mountains and the sky and everything to call too much attention to itself. We want the trains to be the stars. This is just the supporting cast here painted on the wall. Look how much darker these trees look as this paint yes. dries. It just gets so dark. Right. And, and again, it looks almost sort of way too dark. But as he comes back in and adds the detail mm -hmm. of the individual branches and the texture of the actual trees, that's all going to be done in much, much lighter colors. Right. And so while it looks really dark and scary right now, mm -hmm. uh, it, in the end it won't look dark and scary at all. And here's a good example as Robbie's adding the light shining onto the actual ridges in a lighter color. Look how that just pops out and becomes three-dimensional now. And he's got many more lighter layers to go on top of this. And that's what's really bringing it to life and really giving it depth. I asked Robbie if he'd been to art school. You know, and he said he hadn't really he'd taken some classes in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, you do this by figuring it out. Exactly. You screw around. I mean, those were his actual words. He and said, I you do this more. by screwing around. <laughs> And bit by bit, you get better and better at it. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing this for years and years. And, and that's the thing. You just dive in and you try it. And then you try it some more. And then you try it some more. Right. And you get good at it. And Robbie has gotten quite good at it. Yes, he has. So now Robbie is going to come in here and start adding some of the lighter tree colors on top of those really dark tree colors. And here again, look at it just popping right out. Keep in mind that this color is going on much lighter and then as it dries it gets darker uh, because that's the nature of acrylics but then he'll keep coming in with lighter and lighter colors mm -hmm. and that gives all of these trees the detail and the depth that they need. It's quite a bit in school. Mostly what I've done is just figured out on my own and doing what I like. Well, I'm sure impressed at Robbie's technique. Looks great. It just looks so amazing. I mean, there's a lot of work yet to do. Right, but it's taking shape. But it's really coming together. Now, Robbie wanted to drop one of Al's buildings in here, and we kept dropping that in periodically because uh, it's easy to lose track of the scale right. and how things are going to be. So just having a structure in there lets you see how everything's working out scale-wise, mm -hmm. making sure you're not getting things too big or too small relative to the models that are going to populate your layout. Right. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Robbie Spangler painting our backdrop Isn't for us cool? <laughs> and inspiring us on to greatness yeah. so that we can paint our own backdrops and hopefully you are ready and inspired oh. to paint your own backdrop as well <laughs> and if not call Robbie and con him into doing it. <laughs> if it's more than a thousand mile commute though I think he charges money for that oh, so you want to you want to keep that in mind. But how fortunate we are to just have access to Robbie because that's yeah. just so very very well, if you, if you haven't been over to the channel, or heaven forbid, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then you want to go over to the channel and watch the 210 other movies that are over there. And, of course, you want to subscribe, which is the more important thing. Right. And you can get to the channel and you can subscribe by clicking on the infamous blue button. Are you ready for it? Zoink! You see it right here? Blue button says subscribe. If it isn't there, it's because your device doesn't support it. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here again with, in one week with some more screwing around. See you then. Bye-bye.